Hello, welcome back to Turntable Guy. You're probably thinking, what the hell is on his bench today? Ah, what the heck, I thought, uh, why don't we switch it up for a little bit? I don't do this very often, but I uh, went to a thrift store this morning and just looking around for the usual kind of crap that you find these days. And uh, actually, I saw this one last week. It was just sitting there on the uh, electronics shelf looking all sad and lonely. Um, went back again this week and uh, it was still sitting there. Um, so I thought, ah, what the hell, I'll, I'll uh, put it on the uh, testing bench there and uh, grab a CD from their uh, sales tables. So I grabbed one of those, threw it in, and uh, it read the disc. And when I pressed play, it spun up and went through all the tracks. So that's always a good sign. So uh, for the big cost of uh, five dollars i brought this home and uh it is uh it's not in rough condition but it's uh i don't know why it has this velcro on here uh and it's got a couple uh somebody's taped some white straps or something uh to the side but uh the faceplate's really clean and uh i'm gonna give it a nice cleaning it's uh, nothing special. If I had to date this thing, I'd say it's late 90s, early 2000s, maybe. It's uh, made in China, so that doesn't bode too well. But it's a Sony, and uh, if it's got one of their DACs in it, it shouldn't be too bad. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, got the, uh, what they call their high-density linear converter. I don't know what kind of DAC is in it, but uh, I'll get a look and and see what it's like um so i just wanted to make this this video just because um i i really believe that uh you know we're going through a vinyl thing right now where everybody's buying records and trying to restore old turntables but and uh, the cd has definitely become completely out of fashion but uh you know eventually you know things get back into fashion and uh, if you think that cds are going to go away forever you're wrong um, people thought that vinyl would never come back, and here we are. Um, so, you know, the, the, the compact disc is, uh, I think it's here to stay. Yeah, it might not be, you know, um, the most fashionable thing right now, but uh, CDs still sound excellent, um, especially if they're mastered correctly. Um, I certainly love looking for old Telarc discs. They sound phenomenal, and uh, whenever I see them, I, I snatch them up. And I, I've been getting into uh, buying old uh, Philips, Denon, and uh, Sony, and uh, uh, Deutsche Grammophon uh, classical discs because the recording quality is amazing. So I, I think I think CDs will eventually come back, and uh, you know whether they come back, you know where you're actually playing the disc or people just want to get those old recordings again and uh, rip them to uh, digital files i'm not sure but if you are looking to have the actual physical medium you're going to need a cd player and um, having an actual cd player is so much nicer than sticking it in a dvd player or a blu-ray player or anything like that so i thought you know let's uh let's grab this old bugger here um and let's uh let's have a look and just uh you know see what you need to do to these old players to keep them going and uh, we'll clean it up and we'll have a look inside and we'll go from there. So uh, let me uh, go about the process of uh, taking the lid off and we'll come right back. Okay, picking it up with you again here. I got the screws off. I also pulled off that uh, piece of Velcro there. I had to yank it off with pliers. It was like uh, glued on so hard. Um, I'll show you how you get rid of this old uh, glue residue. And uh, who wants to bet that there's uh, like nothing inside this except the, uh, the tray and a tiny little board. There you go. I have a collection of vintage CD players. Um, some old Sonys from the uh, mid 80s um, same with the uh, techniques from that same era and uh, you can't even get your hands inside what's uh, inside the case massive power supplies um, huge tray uh, gigantic 
digital board, analog board. Um, obviously, back then the technology was just starting out, and you know they managed to miniaturize everything, and this is what you get now. You get uh, obviously you still have your your tray and your uh, transport, uh, but uh, the only wires coming off this thing, it looks like there's a little bit of power here, and probably the audio is probably coming through this cable here. And uh, that's it. Um, very few capacitors. Just uh, the cable, the power cable just comes in. It's just soldered right there. Um, very cheaply made. Uh, and then you've got a, a cable that runs to the, uh, the front uh, readout. And that's it. You can't get any simpler than this. Um, I'm going to look if there's a actual uh, a service manual for this and uh, see if there's any caps that we can change in the uh, analog output stage. Maybe put some audio uh, file grade uh, caps in there for fun. Um, you can also uh, change out the op amps. And uh, what I've done in the past is I've uh, removed the op amps, put in um, an eight pin, uh, uh, what the hell are they called? Uh, Oh, socket. That's it. An 8-pin socket. And then uh, you can test different uh, op amps to see if you get any uh, different kind of sound. Um, personally, I've never heard any difference in the sound between op amps, but uh, that's just my ears, right? So anyway, um, so to clean this lid, um, besides you know, soap and water, Windex, whatever you want to use, to get rid of this, um, you can see how the, uh, the metal is cleaner underneath here where the uh, tape was. Uh, to clean off this glue, you just get a little WD-40, right, and you just pour it on top and just let it soak, and it will remove all the residue, and then you can just peel it off with your fingers or with a Q-tip or something, so that'll just eat away all the old glue. And we just let that sit, and then or I'm going to get these things off to... Um, they're double stick taped on as well. So, anyway, we'll just let the uh, WD 40 work its magic. And put that down on the floor. So, you've, uh, you've brought the CD player home and you want to make sure it's working well. So um, one of the things I would recommend doing is removing the face plate. Okay, should be very easy to do. Um, this one's got a knob here that probably needs to come up and off like that. Other than that, well, maybe the uh, the door. We should need to open this up. So you're gonna want to power it up. Open the door and just turn it off and unplug it. Don't play around with live voltages. So then you can um, you can remove the front door. And it's just a matter. It's probably just clipped on in this case. Um, let me uh, let me have a look at that. I'll come right back. Yeah. So the uh, front. Uh, door is just clipped on and you just push this back like that and then it slides off like that and you have your front door faceplate so now you can put the tray back in just plug it in it should retract by itself good and then unplug and we can remove the faceplate probably held on by a few screws underneath uh, looks like three screws, one there, one there, and one there on the feet. Uh, Sony always does the nice thing of putting an arrow beside the screws you need to remove. It's always very handy. Okay, that should uh, release the faceplate. Um, you're going to want to remove this cable here. Just pull up on it like that. 
and it's probably just clipped on at this point and it is there we go there's your faceplate and what you can do is you can remove all these screws holding this in and then you can uh, just wash the plastic get it nice and clean polish the faceplate here where the screen is um, with a little bit of plastic polish um, I like to take it apart get a toothbrush with some Windex to give it a good cleaning scrub it all down and then uh, put a little polish even on the plastic here a real, like a non um, abrasive polish just to bring some shine up and make it look nice but uh, yeah you can definitely take this off I'll probably be doing that um, removing all this it just uh, like in, the, in this case here this is the power button it just uh, it's just clipped on there are a couple clips here just like that and now you can take this button off and give it a nice wash as well uh, oh what the hell let's uh Let's take it apart. Take it apart, and then we'll, then we'll do the, uh, the transport. Things were so cheaply made at this point. I wouldn't doubt this if this is one of the last CD players Sony ever made. So you're going to have all these screws here, and they have to come out. So let me take those out. I'll take them out, and then uh, we'll pull the board up. Okay, I've got the 18 million screws out. And we're just going to pull up on the board. Oh, I, didn't, I missed one. You want tedious. This is tedious. There we go. All right. Up she comes. There you go. There's your board. So there's your main function control board. Power switch right here. Um, your va yeah, it's vacuum fluorescent display. Your infrared sensor here for remote control, which is obviously long gone. And uh, what you can do is you can actually uh, you can clean this potentiometer with a little bit of contact cleaner. This is the uh, fast forward and, and uh, rewind um, for tracks and uh, you can actually all these little buttons if you want you can actually give them a dab of deoxit just to clean out the controls over here as well and give this a nice windexing but for now we'll just put it aside All right, so I think that's all you need to take out here. So now you can see all the dirt and grime that's in there, right? Pretty disgusting. Uh, in here, all the buttons. Um, these probably come out as well. That would be my guess. They're probably not part of this. Just push it out like that. There we go. So just... Uh, push your buttons out oh it's connected to this one you gotta be really careful though eh? it's really gentle stuff there you go so that whole mechanism is your buttons right and they just slide back in so you can take that out and uh, I guess these three buttons here should come out together that would be my guess just don't force anything because it's just plastic right and this stuff will break I actually might just leave these in place because they just seem a little bit flimsy. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to soak some uh, WD-40 on this. And uh, we're going to put this in the, uh, in the laundry sink. We're going to let it soak. And uh, then we'll come back and uh, give it a final cleaning. All right, the uh, faceplate's been washed. I'm just uh, soaking the top of it with a little bit of WD-40 as well to get that adhesive off. Um, 
what we'll do now is we'll uh, we'll get the uh, the transport out of here. Uh, looks like it's held in by just a couple screws. Make that three. I'm in the back here. Looks like all the screws are pretty much the same. They're just your standard, you know, machine screw like this. One, two, three. Just like that. And now we've got a couple connectors. We've got the uh, board connector here. This is undoubtedly for audio and sending out the digital signal. And uh, this looks like a power supply. It's just unplugs. And we should have our transport. And we do. Uh, yeah. Just your typical kind of cheapo transport. What's nice is uh, it doesn't have any belts. That's that's a big plus. So it looks like the uh, tray is just gear driven, which is pretty great. No belts to worry about. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll take off this, uh, this chucking mechanism here. Looks like you just push in on the sides and pull up on it. Oops. The side out. There's your disc chuck. It gives you access to your laser. And, uh, oh, I lied about the belt. There is a belt. So looks like the tray just comes right off. So that's great. And here is our transport, all nice and bare. And it does have a belt. And the belt looks like it's in good shape, too. All right. So, I don't want to mess with this too much. Because stuff can go wrong. Um... I was thinking of, uh, yeah, this all comes out. I was thinking of just cleaning that belt and seeing what kind of condition it's in. Uh, yeah, let's, let's try that. Zoom in a little bit here. See that okay? All right, so let me sit down. So it looks like these two gears come up. One, there's nothing special about it. And two, yeah, then you get easy access to your belt. Here it is. That gear comes off too. And there we go. There's our belt. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit oblong. It's probably been sitting like that forever, right? So this is a perfect opportunity to boil this sucker, and uh, we'll see how the boiling returns it to its natural state of roundness, because it's also kind of dirty. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna throw this in the microwave for a couple minutes in boiling water, and then we'll come back and continue the service of that uh, transport. Welcome back. So our belt boiling is over, and uh, you can see how the shape of the belt is now round again. So that's awesome. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to clean that with a little bit of alcohol, and then we're just going to lubricate and have a look, and I'll show you how to clean a laser lens. So for our belt, just uh, what we usually do with with turntable belts, a little bit of alcohol to get off any old grease. I mean, the boiling probably removed a lot of guck, but uh, I still like to follow up with a little bit of alcohol. There's always something on there. Yeah. 
Yeah, just a little bit of dirt, nothing, nothing too bad. I'm let that sit and dry. That was 70%, by the way. And uh, so, laser lens cleaning. Um, the actual laser block itself is underneath that little plastic lens there. So, I use a little bit of glass cleaner because I found that sometimes alcohol can dry and it can dry a little cloudy. So a little, a little dab of glass cleaner. And uh, I have never seen one that's particularly filthy. I mean, you have to really be in a smoker's home or something for it to be covered in uh, nicotine residue. So it's just gently clean the outside plastic here. And that is it. We can also give uh, where the motor touches the disc, give that a little clean. And uh, I'm just looking at uh, our rail here. It's, uh, it looks lubricated. I'm, I might put a little drop of oil on that. I don't like grease on, on my rails. I know that uh, you can lubricate them with grease, but it looks like whatever Sony put here at the factory is still very nice. I mean, this is not an old CD player. That's how our disc loads. And we got a switch here that tells it that the that, uh, that the disc's in place. Interesting. Um, for you that are interested, this has a Sony KSS two thirteen B laser, and there's your laser power potentiometer. Uh, I would not touch that unless you know you're at the point where you're going to junk the CD player and you're thinking that that might actually help. Um, Sony has actually put a little bit of paint on there to prevent anybody from touching that because if you crank up the power too high you'll uh, you'll burn out the laser. So, And uh, I think that's it. That's all we're going to do here. I'm not going to put any oil on the motors. Um, I might put just the slightest drop on that uh, rail there, right in there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, just general purpose oil. I'm just going to put a drop right there. That is it. All right, start putting this back together. Okay, we start putting our belt back on here. We got our three gears. Um, that's our belt gear. It goes around here. first. Okay. I don't like when the belts are twisted. I know it's not um, important, but call me anal. I don't like a twisted belt. All right. So that one, and then this one, and then that one, right? Yes. All right. And then we've got our tray here. And uh, just clean off this guck here. There's no lubrication on this whatsoever. So I guess we can just give that a clean. Do like a nice clean tray.
Okay. Good. This is where it obviously rides here. <clears throat> okay, so to get this back in, I'm just gonna want to slide it in. There's a couple notches there. Just going to grab. So I fought with this thing for a good 10 minutes. I think I've got it back to where it belongs here. I've never seen uh, an opening mechanism like this. It's it's kind of J-shaped, and this uh, whole these three gears actually twist on a on a pivot, and they go around this curve. So I'm hoping it's right. If it's not, it's going to make a hell of a lot of noise when we uh, press the open button. But uh, let's put it back in. So, uh, three screws. And uh, two connections. I'm just curious to know if it actually does work. I'm going to give it a quick test. I'm just going to kind of put the faceplate on just to get the, the button. Hooked up so I can uh, test it. Power connection. Our board connection. going to grab our button here for now. I forgot to clean the power button. I'll have to do that next. So I'm just going to hook this up just like this. We don't need the face plate. Just like that. And then we can plug it in see what the hell kind of noise this makes. All right. Open is here. Hey, look at that. It works. Lucky. Let's see if it reads a disc. Gotta be really careful not to short anything when you're doing stuff like this. Just gonna pop a disc in here. Oops, wrong button. There it is. Eleven tracks. Play. Correct. So it's working. Where's the next track? No, that's not it. Oh, this is next track. So our laser's moving across. I had to put another drop of oil on that uh, on that rail, and I did put a couple drops of oil on the uh, motors. So, yeah, this is awesome. So we're working. Okay, so push eject. And our tray's working. All right, so I'm going to unplug this because I don't like having all these open circuits here. You can touch chassis, and then you're probably done. You'll blow an IC, and it's game over. I'm just going to leave that door open for now. I'll get rid of this. Okay, so we know our control board works. I'm going to go clean this power switch, actually, and then uh, we'll start a reassembly. Okay, we're ready to start uh, putting this back together. We'll put our control buttons back in. 
faceplate's been cleaned. I haven't done any kind of polishing on it yet, but uh, so it just goes in like that. It's flush like this. And then we can put this down and we can fit our control board back on. And it just goes down like that. fidgety over here but eventually you'll get it into place it's actually uh, it's this uh, fast forward and rewind thing here that's uh, being a pain in the butt so let's just put a screw down in there to hold this area down so it's not popping up. Don't over tighten screws that go like metal screws that go into plastic. You're, you'll uh, you'll destroy the area that it screws into. There, so just put those down like that, and then our power button just snaps in. Like this. And that's that. It's got maybe a couple screws to hold it down too. And there we go, there's our power button. So let me continue on putting these screws in and get the faceplate all buttoned up. I just realized that the power button is held in by these two clips. But there's two screw holes here, and there's no screws in them. And the power button is something that you're going to push a lot. I understand that it's probably not going to move, but there are two screw holes, and there's two posts that go into the faceplate. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a couple uh, I'm gonna put a couple screws in there, just some machine screws. Uh, they should just bite in and, and thread themselves in, and that'll just help to hold the uh, help to hold this board in a little better. There. They're not touching any traces or anything, so. And plus, it's not 120 volts on here. There, so now we got we got a couple screws holding that in. That's good. So our faceplate's done. Okay, so this can go back on now. Relatively simple to do. Just get it to mechanically put into position first. A couple latches on the side that go in, that's it. And then uh, we got to, what, three screws underneath, I think it was. I noticed also that it's uh, it's missing a little rubberized foot over here. I have to check and see if I have something in my stash to uh, to replace that with. Okay, there we go, players back together, and uh, we're going to give this a cleaning. Looks like there's a, not a burn mark, but some kind of heat mark here. I don't know if I'll be able to get out, but we'll, uh, we'll polish that too. And uh, let's give it a plug in here, just make sure everything's working. Oh, we, did, we didn't hook up our wire, our control cable here. 
Oops, sorry. There. Plug it in. Power. Open. Nice. Now we can we can put our uh, our uh, door faceplate on now. It just goes on like this. Just line it up. Snap it in. And that's it. All right. So let's uh, have a look at how those uh, two weird uh, strap things are doing on the top of the uh, the cover because um, I soaked them a little bit with uh, WD-40. So I'm going to just check to see how they're doing. Just move the player aside for a second. Yeah, so these suckers here, they've been soaking, and they are not budging. Oh, man, they're on there with some kind of double side tape. I do not want to get a screwdriver in and pry, because like if you get in there like this, and start prying, you are going to bend this extremely thin metal. There's a chance you might bend it anyway just by twisting this, right? So let me think about what I want to do here. I'm thinking maybe razor blade, but I don't want to scratch the finish either. So let me think about this and I'll be right back. Well, the solution was uh, some good old fashioned pliers. Just got on there and twisted. Um, no damage to the, uh, to the metal, but uh, as you can see, the tape remains, so I am going to pick at that a little bit here, and uh, we'll be back. I gave the lid a uh, polish, um, a few marks here and there. It's not awful. Um, like I said, the faceplate's got a weird mark here, and you can still kind of see where that uh, Velcro tape was right here, but. Most of the time you're looking at the disc player from the front and the front looks great. It also got a very light polish. I just used a little bit of plastic polish. That's it. So, uh, let's see. Not the quickest. Not bad. Sounds pretty good. Well, there you go. One $5 CD player saved from either going to the uh, landfill once the uh, thrift store can sell it. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I have no idea. I really can't sell it. No one's going to want one. But maybe one will want one or somebody will want one in about five years, right? So who knows? Just put it in storage for now and... Uh, we know it'll work. Anyway, don't expect too many CD player repair videos um, or restoration videos. Just every blue moon, I thought I might mix it up you know, once in a while and do like a receiver or, or a CD player or something. But uh, next video, we'll, we'll get right back to turntables and uh, back to where the meat of the channel is. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to Turntable Guy, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.